Welcome to episode 261, Ren Jianfei and Hua Hui, how he built the world's most valuable telecom company. This is an outline of episode 261. There are three reasons why we study Ren Jianfei. First, Ron built the largest telecom company in the world in 30 years, starting with less than $6,000. Second, Ren Jianfei is one of the world's most secretive self-made billionaire. He did not grant an interview for the first 26 years. Third, he introduced a new type of capitalism, employee ownership capitalism. Let us meet Ranjan Fei, the 73-year-old CEO who started his company 30 years ago when he was 43. In 2018, Huawei is the largest telecom company in the world, with presence in 170 countries and almost 30% of the global telecom market. Since 2015, Huawei entered the smartphone business and is now the world's third largest producer of smartphones after Samsung and Apple. Huawei CEO says the company never wastes its resources on non-strategic opportunities. Virtual reality is coming and it will bring more interactions. I believe the amount will be huge and this is a strategic opportunity. He was born in Anshun, Guizhou Province, China in 1944. His parents were high school teachers, originally from a wealthy family in Jiangsu Province. In 1963, he graduated from Chongqing University in Sichuan Province with a degree in engineering. Upon graduation, Ren worked for the PLA, People's Liberation Army. In 1978, he joined the Chinese Communist Party. Here's a twist of fate. Almost immediately, he lost his job in the military when the PLA was downsized. In 1987, Ren founded his company Huawei with 21,000 Chinese dollars, which is equivalent to 5,680 US dollars. With an investment of only several thousand dollars, it started as a business that resold PBX equipment. In 1992, it developed and deployed its own digital switching solution in rural Chinese markets. Soon after that, Huawei expanded to major cities in China and other emerging markets with a comprehensive product portfolio. By 2000, Huawei's international sales had exceeded $100 million. With that experience and success, Huawei quickly won major customers in Europe, Latin America, and almost every region of the world. Today, Huawei provides customized network solutions for telecom carriers in over 140 countries, serving one-third of the world's population and has been trusted by 45 of the top 50 telecom operators around the world. Now, 26 years of secrecy, that is 1987 to 2013, Rand granted his first interview in New Zealand in 2013. <laughs> 对于这个来自中国的竞争对手也是头痛不已。这家企业就是华为公司总裁名叫任正飞，但在媒体眼里，这家企业却是出了名的难以打交道。任正飞一开始就给自己立下了一个规矩，绝不见媒体。The 70-year-old Ren spoke about his early year experience with Huang Wei. 任董你的动机是什么可以开始做这种的公司开始做华为做华为并不是在我意想之中的行为因为我们在那个八十年代初期中国军队打金卷我们是集体比国家裁掉了裁掉了我们总要走向这个社会总要生产我们今年最大的特点就不懂什么叫市场经济我们那个时候一分钱没有还把代理真的搞得溜转就是那个时候我们就是很没有钱嘛这样的话呢我们在这个我们就没有货源就寻求货源那我们就给人家做代
，一个是香港红年，就是哈克斯一百，那带你带你了以后呢，就是我们带的太好了，人家就觉得你们要把市场占完了，人家又不给我们货了，把我们你好不容易赚到的钱，你就逼到到市场上去高价买货，再来卖卖卖卖给客户，从而呢就维护这个市场信用。In 2017, Huawei sold 153 million smartphones, and is the third largest smartphone company in the world after Samsung and Apple. Now, the relentless march to number one in telecom in the world. One of its many secrets: 10% of Huawei sales go to R&D every year. In 2017, Huawei employed 75,000 employees. In R and D, and spent 13.8 billion in R and D. In 2017, Huawei is spending the same amount on R and D as Amazon and Alphabet. Now, the controversy with the U.S. Congress is Huawei a spy for China? Given Ren Jianfei's past background with the PLA, he asserted that Huawei has no connection to the cybersecurity issues the U.S. has encountered in the past. Ren, who joined the Communist Party in 1978, also explained his rationale behind the decision. He told the reporters that his personal belief was to work hard, dedicate himself, and even sacrifice himself for the benefit of the people. Now, Ren was quoted as saying that joining the Communist Party was in line with those aspirations. Huawei earned two-thirds of its $35 billion annual revenue last year from outside of China. Now, while Huawei has large operations in developing countries in Africa and in the Middle East, it has found it difficult to become more entrenched in developed nations such as the U.S. and Australia. Now, last October, a U.S. congressional report recommended that companies avoid using Huawei products because of espionage risks. In response to the report, Huawei says it has offered complete cooperation and accuses the House Intelligence Committee of predetermining an outcome even before the investigation. Huawei has repeatedly denied that their equipment poses a threat to security, pointing out that rivals also manufacture their products in China. So now the next frontier. Huawei built the world's first 5G chipset. Huawei on Sunday unveiled its first chip to enable mobile devices to access 5G internet speeds. The chipset is called the Huawei Balong 5G01. The Chinese technology giant claims that it is the world's first commercial chipset that meets 5G standards. 5G refers to the next generation of mobile internet that could help power future driverless cars and even internet-connected infrastructure in cities. What have I learned today? Ren Jianfei is a business guru. In 30 years, he built Huawei into number one telecom in the world, starting with less than $6,000. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your questions and comments below. My next video will be Ren Jianfei, 14 Lessons, wishing everyone peace and prosperity.